This week's video is an age-old tale of high school football. A bulldog squad with a hot hand looking to keep their winning streak on a roll. A Chiefs team in dire need of a win came to the dock looking for some luck of their own. What happens when the two meet up? I'm Kevin the Editor here to answer that question. Highlights from Sequoia at Cedartown coming up after a word from our sponsor. This Polk Sports Wire highlight reel is brought to you by our friends over at Smith & Miller Funeral Home in Cedartown. They're here to help your family in time of need with their guidance to serve your loved ones. Check out the link in the description or call 678-901-1234 to learn more. We thank Smith & Miller Funeral Home in Cedartown for their continued support of local news on Polk Today and coverage like this here on Polk Sports Wire. It's week three, sports fans, which means the teams are starting to find their form for prognosticators like myself to talk about. And it also means that a Bulldog squad with two wins on the record books for the year is likely going to have a stellar night on the gridiron for an early season senior night at the dock. Especially since the Chiefs are having a start to the season they were not hoping for. Sequoia drove into Seertown with an 0-2 record on the books. They opened their season with a 41-14 loss to Lambert and then added an L last week on their schedule when they fell in overtime to Rabin Gap and the 35-28. By the way, both of those were home stands. Chiefs on paper look like the bigger batter team from Region 66A, but that record isn't fooling anyone. Let's jump right into the Week 3 highlights. We've got a lot of ground to cover from this one. First possession for each side amounted to nothing, but the Bulldogs finally got rolling and ate most of the first quarter off on a drive on the ground, especially on plays like this when Harlem Diamond gets the shakeoff move to gain some more yardage downfield. Bulldogs first down. That would ultimately set up the first of count em with me. One, two, three touchdowns for the juice on the night. Patrick Gardner pounds his way across the plane for six before the quarter ends. Bulldogs up seven nothing after the PAT. Second quarter, next drive, Harlem Diamond turns on the Jets and almost makes it in for a touchdown. Juice gets his second TD on the Night to end the drive. PAT misses. Cedartown now up 13-0. Ensuing Chiefs possession and oh boy what a play. Sequoia QB Alex Conti puts up a pass and look out it's not a bird or a plane but Tay Harris for a diving interception. Let's look at this again in slow-mo and watch Harris pull off this Superman move. Big play for the sophomore. Pushing the fast forward button let's jump into the third quarter. This is one that the Bulldogs fan base just wants back right now. Tanner makes the pass to Xavier Hargrove and oh no just before the goal line he fumbles the ball and Sequoia recovers. Slowing this one down. It looked almost like Hargrove was across the goal line when he fumbled, but he was just inches away. Didn't matter. Sequoia's offense couldn't capitalize. Bulldogs would have two turnovers on the night. That didn't hurt him. Okay, now we're in the fourth. Bulldogs ball. Harlem Diamond punches in a second TD of the night in the second half. He gets in for six point after. Puts Bulldogs up 35 to nothing. But wait, one last dramatic bit of action for the fans. The youngsters go out on special teams to finish and come up with a huge play. Short kickoff bounces, and Sequoia's Chris Jordan misses the catch and cover. Instead, a big grab for Jules Davis to recover and allow the Bulldogs to take a knee and secure the victory. The fireworks cap off the 35 to nothing win over the Chiefs. Head coach Jamie Abrams said the Bulldogs still have some work to do before this next big game. Uh, three games up, three games down. The Bulldogs are looking really good so far this year. Any thoughts on uh, on tonight's performance? Uh, I think, you know, defensively, we were able to hold them out of the end zone. Offensively, I feel like we sputtered a little bit. You know, didn't quite perform the way that we, the way we would like to. Um, you know, turn the ball over, which is we don't, obviously don't want to do. So um, it was tw twice in the second half there, so not really, not really uh, pleased with that. Three touchdown night for Patrick Gardner. The big man was getting the ball a lot in the wind. Let's turn to him for post game comments too. Coach trusting everybody and everybody do their keys and like he tell us every day. It um, may not be our night, but I guess they gave me the ball. We still got some things working. I got some things working on. I had a fumble, but. We all get past mistakes and we're just going to move on to the next level. Bulldogs moved to 3-0 heading into Calhoun. Cedartown made the trip last season for a Thursday night game and fell to the Jackets. By the way, joining this game was none other than Cedartown alum and Cleveland Brown running back Nick Chubb. We got a great shot of Nick with King Chubb on the sidelines. Go check it out on the Polk Sports Wire Facebook and Twitter. You can find links in the description. Okay, sports fans, it's scoreboard time. Let's take a look at more results from around the area. Starting off this week, we're looking down south to Bremen. Blue Devils traveled for another area rival showdown against the Bowden Red Devils on Friday night. The Demonic Bash saw Bowden take a 35-0 win. Temple traveled to Chattooga on Friday. Tigers came home with a 44-19 win. Carrollson County had off. Shifting eastward of our county lines, let's look at Paulding. A 2-0 Paulding County Patriots invaded an 0-2 Harrison on Friday night. Harrison defeated their turf. 28-14 win for them. Another local showdown, East Paulding at Hiram. East wins 35-28. 
North Paulding was at Kennesaw Mountain, and this one a face-off between two early season undefeated squads. Squeaker win for Kennesaw Mountain, 37-36. South Paulding had this week off too. Let's move counterclockwise to the Northeast. Bartow County had several games happening on Friday night. Cartersville traveled to Altoona and expected result when the Hurricanes blow into Buccaneers Bay. Canes win 28-20. Woodland hosted an 0-2 model this week, looking to extend their winning record. Model won out, 17-14 picked up a needed win in the early season. Cass went to face Drew in Riverdale on Friday night, came home huge winners, 58-15. Adairsville traveled to Northeast Georgia at Rabin County, and ouch, Rabin 72, Adairsville 36. That's a math problem, not a score. Let's shift up I-75 to Gordon County. Look at Cedar Town's foe for next week at Calhoun. Jackets were on the road looking to keep their good fortune against an 0-2 Creek View. Jackets win close, 26-21. Are there cracks in the Calhoun Foundation? We'll see. Cedar Town also faces Sonoraville in region play later in the season. Phoenix made a trip to Dalton. They kept the flame alive in a win, 27-21 over the Catamounts. Gordon Central went to face Coosa. Both are 0-2 and both teams in dire need of a win, and there can only be one at the end of the night. Holy cow, Coosa, y'all made it clear you aren't done yet. Eagles win, 33-21. Keeping this journey going north, Ringgold was at Northwest Whitfield. Tigers and Bruins, oh my. This one went Northwest way, 30-17. Southeast Whitfield traveled to Gordon Lee. First time I can remember the past few years, Raiders have started off with a winning record, and Gordon Lee is 0-2. What's up, Trojans? Not much. 46-22 win gets them in the winning column. Heritage Katusa went to Lakeview, Fort Oglethorpe Friday, looking to make it 3-0-1 on the year. Generals are victorious with a win over the Warriors, 48-14. Vanna County won 38-12 over Pickens. Uh, Murray County teams are up next. North Murray wins big and poor salt in the Ridgeland Panthers win. 56-19 victory for the Mountaineers. Murray County fell to Gilmer 36-0. Another crazy score. Central Carroll falls to Hampton 34-33. Wow, wasn't expecting that result. Pepperell and our Murchie were off this week, so we jump right to the Darlington Tigers. They were on the road at Christian Heritage, coming off back-to-back -back wins on the road and looking to make it three in a row. Tigers get that W 36-14. Final showdown on the night. We won want to talk about Rome Wolves at Carrollton Trojans, both schools at 2-0 heading into the contest. I've been wondering how Rome would match up with the University of Carrollton this year, and man, did we get a good one. 23-6 victory for the Trojans. Okay, that wraps up this week's highlight show. We'll be back for week four from the sidelines of Rock Mart at Dalton and much more from Polk Sports Wire. I'm Kevin, the editor. Thanks for tuning in, sports fans.